Good luck. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's start. So welcome to this uh, presentation. My name is Karim Boumedel, and you're going to see a presentation called Use Cacli with all your virtualization solution. So first, some words about me. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat, working on Kubert. Here are some of the things I like. I like my guitars, piano, and so on. I like rollerblading. I like Python much more than Go, actually. Uh, and I like studying uh, languages, Ab uh, uh, Arabic, Berberian, for instance. Cool. About the agenda for today, uh, I will talk a little bit about focus and automation. Then I will explain in this context what Cacli is, why it helps me. I will provide some additional facts. Then it will be time for live demo using this network, so we'll see how it goes. We will do a recap. And finally, we will have hopefully some time for questions. Let's begin. First, with a, a couple of words about focus and automation. I want to convey the idea that it's getting more and more complicated to focus because we have things getting in the way like Facebook, uh, Twitter, WhatsApp, Telegram, uh, YouTube, or other stuff, right? Uh, so I really believe it's about finding the right balance between automating the boring parts and focusing again on what's relevant. So I'm a sysadmin guy, so in this context, I created a cool a tool called uh, Cacli. So what is Cacli? It's basically a client tool meant to interact with virtualization providers. And I mean libvirt, but then it evolved into something that helps me uh, handling kubvirt, GCP, AWS, overt, and OpenStack. The idea is to be to easily manage VMs from command lines the same way, regardless of the platforms that you want to, to use. Uh, there's then also a, a construct which, I, which is called plan file, we will see what it is, which allows us to clear to declare VMs or other objects like uh, containers, uh, networks, pools, disks, and so on, right? And then we are also able to share them using a concept of repos and products. There's Jinja support in those plan files, which means that you can leverage Jinja constructs um, to actually uh, declare variables, uh, use looping or conditional stuff. And there's also support for containers, whether Docker containers or Kubernetes objects, pod or deployments to be actu actually accurate. Uh, there are existing plan files that I developed to deploy things like Kubernetes, OpenShift, Kubert, Overt, OpenStack, Foreman, and so on. <coughs> there's even a web interface done in, Jab in, uh, in Flask, which is probably crappy, but that's not relevant, I guess. Uh, yeah. Then let me provide you some additional facts regarding the installation. You can deploy it either as a container, or you can uh, that you, a container that you can deploy with Docker or Podman to be accurate. Or you can also use uh, an existing package, so it's either RPM or, or Deb. In which case, we only bundle libvirt dependencies to make the, those packages small. Right. There's an ecosystem about, around Cacli because Cacli is also a, a Python library. So it means that we can actually uh, use Ansible modules through Cacli. There's a dynamic inventory, which leverages Cacli. And there's even a Kubernetes const custom controller that you can use to declare VMs there. So in all of those cases, I believe that the interest is that you, has, you have a single tool, right? Like, for instance, the dynamic inventory, you use the same dynamic inventory, regardless of whether you're using Overt, uh, Libvirt, OpenStack, or so on. And the same with the Ansible module, a single Ansible module, whether you're using GCP or AWS or Overt or, or Kubevert, whatever you have in mind. Okay, about the roadmap, the idea is mainly to add new providers, uh, DigitalOcean, Azure, IBM Cloud and uh, Alibaba Cloud, which I believe are the top uh, cloud providers which are currently not coded uh, in this tool. <coughs> About weaknesses, there are some weaknesses, I believe. Uh, so typically, I believe that the documentation should be improved, in particular the installation process. Uh, then you need tests. I removed them at some point. So, uh, but I've, I've, uh, they are no back, and, but they need some reshaping. And the logo, uh, a friend did. Uh, the logo and probably it needs some uh, improvements too. Okay, 
that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. I didn't want to, to talk too much, but I already did talk too much. So let's go with the live demos. So the idea is to show you how to do bootstrapping. Then we will create a VM in several places. We will use these profiles. We will use plan files. Then I will also explain how to deploy Kubert and OpenShift, for instance, using product. And if we have enough time left, I will probably uh, show you the web interface and maybe Ansible integration. Let's try. Let me switch to this. OK, I got clear. And I will begin with this first. Uh, I'm going to try it with, with your stuff, by the way. Uh, let's see if it works. Yes. OK, so this, this demo is just bootstrapping, right? So what we want to do is just create a first provider, and we want to launch a VM on it. Simple. So first, I'm going to delete my existing uh, Kakli config file, which is stored in this directory, config.yaml. OK? And I'm going to use this command, Kakli bootstrap, to actually uh, bootstrap a libvirt client. In this case, it's a remote one. Of course, I could also use my local libvirt, not in my case, but if you even a uh, Linux box. Uh, OK, that's simple. This got bootstrapping. And basically, what it does is just creating this file, config.yaml, OK, where I want to, to show you there's a default <coughs> section over there, right, where I'm saying which client I want to use. It's all YAML. Then I'm setting default values for all the parameters that you can override. That's fine. And then there's a corresponding my libvirt section with the name I put, where I say I want to use this remote hypervisor with default value. I'm using SSH as a URI. Let's try this. OK. And Indeed, I can see my available clients, right? I've got this my libvirt one that I just created, along with a fake one that I use with just to do testing. And it has some uh, other utilities, but it allows you to test uh, Kakli without any uh, provider. Good. OK. On some there, what I will typically do is uh, download cloud image, right? The idea is to leverage existing cloud image. So with this Kakli download command, you can download either CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, even Rail or Debian cloud image so that you can create VMs from there. Let's see which one are available in this, uh, in this, uh, for this hypervisor. So I previously run Kakli download CentOS uh, 7, and so CentOS is there. Say I want the Cyrus run, I would do Kakli download Cyrus, so it's communicating with my libvirt uh, remote instance, which is uh, running at home, by the way. And it's downloaded it, and once it's finished download, we can see it's there. Kakli list minus templates, and I will be able to use this to create a VM. OK? So let's create a VM, finally. It's as simple as that. We specify the template that we want to use, right? And the name of the VM, VM1, OK? Kakli minus VM minus P, and the VM got created. It's easy, OK? In this case, we are you know, using default values for things like uh, CPUs, memory. If you want to tweak this, how do we do that? Pretty much the same command that we can see that we are passing additional parameters. In this case, the memory, right? I want a 2 gigabyte VM. And I'm also specifying the disks. I want the VM to have two disks with the indicated size. Cool. Now, if I use Kakli list, I can list uh, the VMs that are running in this hypervisor, right? VM1, VM2, they are there. And you can see that the IP is also shown. I mean, it's not really uh, properly formatted be because of the output, but that's fine, right? I can see the name of the VM and the IP and so on, right? So since I have the IP, actually I'm able to SSH into the VM. Kakli SSH VM1. I will connect to the VM. And uh, you can see that I'm using the, the CentOS cloud image. So I was connect I'm connecting a CentOS u uh, user. We are detecting the cloud user depending on the template that we want to use. And also, you, you note that I didn't provide any password because my uh, public uh, key got automatically injected for me so that I uh, don't have to, f uh, to think about it and so that I can focus. OK, cool. Let me exit on this VM. OK. And then I can delete my VM, VM1, VM2. In this case, I'm doing the, I'm deleting with a single command line, right? VM1, VM2, just to wait a little bit. And my VM is deleted. That will be my first demo. Let's go with the second one. This one is called a VM everywhere. So it's going to be pretty much the same stuff, but now we are going to create the VM in not only on libvirt, but on other, on other parts. Good. 
let me first establish my own config file, which is a bit more complex. And you can see that indeed mine has not only libvirt or KVM, but I'm also, I also have AWS over KVM. I've got GCP, KubeVirt, OVirt, OpenStack, pretty much all of them. Good. Let's create a VM in my default libvirt client. We already did that. So it's pretty much the same, VM10. It's getting created. That worked. We are happy. OK. No, let's do the same, but in this case, I'm going to create it in my GCP account, right? So for people familiar with that, I don't have to use gcloud, which is fine, but, to, but, but you need to learn it, okay? And it's created. Let's do the same with AWS. So I never, in this case, AWS, I, I never use the AWS client, so I can't talk about it. I just use my tool, right? So under the hood, yeah, I have to, to, to indicate that when you, when you attack GCP or AWS, you don't download the template. You use the existing cloud image from the corresponding cloud provider, of course. OK, good. If I list, yes, I need to be careful with this, uh, the, the VM on my default provider, right, they are there, the VM10 I, got, I created. If I list them on my GCP provider, so I'm just pointing to a different uh, client, as I call them, right? I will see the VM that I've got there, so cover stuff, but also my VM10 is there, and the IP showing, so I could be, I would actually be able to say CACLI SSH the same way that I did earlier. Okay, let's finish with AWS. Pretty much the same. We try to also have the same output regardless, again, of the virtualization that we want to use. And of course, we would do the same for Covert, Overt, or OpenStack. The same idea. Okay, now I'm going to delete the VM on each of them, so it's pretty much as we did earlier, so that you just want to know that I'm um, specifying several clients, so I'm actually deleting uh, sequentially the VM over there. And that's pretty much it. Let's go with a third demo. <laughs> okay, this one is called Profile. Of course, because so, up until now, we have uh, either created VM with, uh, with default settings, right? Or we specified part of the setting using common line, like memory and so on. That's fine, but we can do it better, right? So we are going to use profile. Profile are basically defined in the cacli profile.yml file, right? So there are a bunch of them, but just let's focus on, on one I've created, which is called forcedem. So in this forcedem profile, I'm specifying that I want to use a template, which is optional. I want to use the CentOS one. I specify the number of CPUs that I want to use. A domain reserve DNS is set to true, which means that a DNS entry will be created in this case in libvirt, or if I use GCP, that will be created as a public uh, DNS entry. Uh, I'm specifying that I want two disks with size 10 and 20 and so on. I think it's pre f fairly readable. I'm also uh, executing some command at launch time through cloud init, so I'm setting a custom mode D, as you can see here. And, uh, and I'm also, yeah, uh, using notify. So it's, you should see it here, but there's some push bullet integration. OK? Ah. OK, we can also list profile using CACLI list profile. It's pretty much the same output, right? It doesn't show well because of the output, but that's fine. OK, so let's create a VM with this profile, right? So the VM is named for the, he, he, uh, he's from the profile for them, sorry. Since I'm not specifying a VNM, a random one is picked for me, right? This one is called Insane, right? And now it's deploying. Since I specified reserve DNS and set it uh, to true, I'm actually waiting for, uh, to collect the IP that, uh, that I receive through DHCP. And once it's done, the DNS entry will be created. There's also support for static networking. OK, cool. If we check the info of this uh, VM with Catly info, you can see the information, right? Again, the NICs. All the information is visible, and again, it would be the same regardless of the platform, right? Uh, yes, and also just note that for most most commands, if I don't specify uh, a name for for the command, the VM last v created VM on the corresponding uh, current uh, provider is the one used, so the one I just created. Good. Let's connect to this VM, and for instance, we will check that the DNS entry was created along with custom mod D. You can see the custom mode deeds there. If I do a ping of the VM, right, you can see it works. And you can't, I think you can't show it, but in my notification over here, 
right? You can see that because of the push bullet just right now, I've just received the information. So it's quite full, of course, not when you create a simple VM, but when you create several ones and you want to, f to verify that things worked well, you can use that as a, to launch a command and receive a notification on your, on your phone or so on. Okay, cool. Let me exist. Okay, and finally I will delete this VM. That's cool. Nice. I've got more demos. You tell me when you're bored with my demos. <laughs> okay, this one is called plants. Let's see what a plant file is. The idea be behind the plan, it comes from the Terraform stuff, if you're familiar with that, more or less, right? But the idea is to make the uh, pretty much create multiple objects at once and handle them as an entity. <laughs> Let's see. This is a simple plan, right? So uh, it's just, it will just create three VM, VM1, VM2, and VM3. If you really have a look, it's pretty much the same syntax as, as the profile technically, just that it's used in a different context, right? And by the way, I, c I could be referencing here uh, exist also any profile that I've created, or I could even define a profile within this plan and point it uh, directly. So I can do it whatever, where, the way I want. Okay, so this one will create three VMs. So let's launch the plan, Cackly plan, and it will gonna it's going to deploy my free VM, VM1, VM2, and VM3, hopefully. It's running on my NUC at home, uh, in this case. Okay, so VM1 got deployed, VM2 got deployed, and VM3 will get deployed just right now. Okay, cool. So of, we can see that the objects are there with Cackley list, as we did earlier. So it, I think uh, you understand how it goes now. Okay, VM1, VM2, VM3, we got the IP again. Okay. Of course, if we rerun the plan, right, it won't recreate the VMs. It will skip them because they already exist. Okay? Now, if I delete one of the VM, VM3, for instance, yes, and rerun the plan, in this case, of course, the missing VM will get recreated. There's also support, by the way, to actually run the plan with a minus minus update flag so that if you change the some elements of the plan, then the VMs are, are updating accordingly with the memory, CPUs, the disk, or the NIX section. Okay, we can also uh, handle all the objects of the plans at once. For instance, we can stop all the VMs just by using plan minus minus stops, or start, there's also a start. We can even delete the plan at once. Yeah, that's easy. Right? And again, I insist that in this plan, it's not only about VMs. You can create your own libvirt networks or no, your own networks regardless of the uh, virtualization platform. You can create uh, containers, you can create disks, and so on. Okay, here's a more complex plan. Don't get scared, right? But uh, just so that you understand, this one is using parameters. So what it means is that we define a default parameter section. We say node to three. We define whatever variables that we want, the template, the domain, and so on, some keys, right? And then we use Jinja to loop, right? Using these parameters, and then we use uh, whatever parameters we want, right? There's also, yeah, there's also a file and script section that I can use to actually uh, inject files within my VMs, or scripts to actually run scripts that is uh, some arbitrary commands that I want to use. And they are also rendered. So that means that if I have a look at the file that I want to inject, it can either be static or it can be uh, Jinja, pretty much. Okay? The same with scripts. I want, I want the, the, to install all those packages, right? And I'm using the package variable that you defined over there. So with that, I can actually launch my plan with this command, right? So pretty much what we saw earlier, but the difference is that I'm actually forcing overriding some of the parameters. So remember node was set to three, for instance. So in this case, no, I said node to five. So I will create not three VMs, but five, right? And the disk size was one of the parameters. So I've just override it. So instead of disk set to 20, uh, they will be set to, to 30. And indeed, I can see that not only did I create those three VMs, but now it's gonna create the two of the uh, VMs, right? And I could rerun the plan with a different node setting let's say a node set to uh, 20 and it, will, it would recreate the missing VMs. Oh yeah, now it's when I need to wait because I want 
the IP to be there. I've got five minutes. I'm good. I'm good with that. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Checklist. list. Okay. Just one cat release because I just want to, sh to for the workflow of the demo to be sure that I'm able to SSH into the VM, so I can. So indeed, you just remove that, right? I can SSH, right? And we can see, right, that yeah, I'm connected, cloud in it, and all that stuff. But if I do a sudo minus i, right, I can see my file and we can see that it's there and it got rendered, right, with whatever parameters I set. For instance, the node set to five, so. You can pretty much create whatever you want. That's the idea. Good. Let me exit. Yes, and I would conclude this demo. I've got one left. One left. This one go with product. Okay, so products are pretty much the same idea as the plan files. The only difference is that we want to they sit on top of them to make a uh, them easy to redistribute, redistribute, sorry, and to use for people not wanting to deal with plan details. Okay, so how does it go? I create repo, right? This is my repo. This is my URL where I'm storing pl those plan files. And actually, it's just a git repo that is cloned, e.cacli uh, slash plans, right? So those are all the plans I have, along with this kmeta file, which contain metadata. I've got this metadata, and since I'm able to browse it, I can see all the available products at my disposal. So I've got all those samples, then I've got, uh, oh, it doesn't show very well, but OpenStack, uh, OpenShift, uh, Kubernetes, uh, and so on. So let's go with one of, one of them. For instance, I can list the products of a given product. For instance, OpenShift, I can deploy uh, whatever I want. For instance, Fission, uh, Federation, if you want to deploy two VMs, and so on. Let's deploy one. Oh, f sorry, first, let's get information on one of the, on one of the product, Kubert. I want to deploy Kubert. I can say cacli product Kubert minus minus info, and I see description of the plan, and then pretty much that those are all the parameters that you can override. Under the hood, it's using this plan concept. Let's say I want to deploy Kubert, cacli product Kubert. You've got cacli install, you've got an available provider somewhere, and you are pretty much deploying it. It deployed, once, it fini once Cloud Init finished, you've got Kubert installed. Let's install, for instance, OpenShift, right? But in this case, I'm going to override some parameters. So it's pretty much the same, but I'm saying, yeah, deploy <laughs> Origin using OC Cluster App. We don't care well, how it's deployed. I just want OpenShift, technically. And I'm setting Knative to do it. We install Knative, STO, whatever it has to install. OK? And of course, I can check uh, VM. And I can see that my VM got creati created. Kubert, origin, whatever VM, the one that I didn't delete. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here because I don't want to do too much demo. So let me get back to this. We did the demo, right? So just to recap, automating the boring stuff, right? Always trying to focus. Uh, and in this context, I believe that CACLI is a tool that at least helps me in automating the infrastructure. Uh, whether you've got one single libvirt, you have got several ones, you're using other cloud providers, I think it's a helpful tool, so feel free to use it. Uh, and now if you have questions, it's going to be the right time. And if you don't have questions, just this uh, picture that I put, it's, uh, it's an uh, optical illusion. If you focus, but it's going to be difficult because it's short, but you can come closer if you want. But if you, can, if you focus on whatever part of the picture for like 10 seconds, you should see how the image blurs <coughs> and turn white. If that doesn't work, it's because you're too far away. Sorry for that. Any questions? No, it's the time. Go ahead. Um, if you wanted to provision a uh, multi-system provider, for example, this kind of thing, and uh, can you uh, define some plan uh, with uh, yeah. like SMPS, but uh, for multiple and first OK. The question was, uh, can you? Uh, include information in the plan file so that you de de uh, deploy VMs across several cloud providers, more or less. Yes, you can. Uh, I didn't show it, but one of the parameters that you can use in the plan file is also specifying which client you want to create for a given VM. So you can say, uh, create me three VM, but two of them on this cloud provider and the last one on this one. And the same for DNS, by the way.
Last question, I believe, because I'm out of time. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, can we use it to, uh, to provision with Ansible, for example, uh, a VM we create? That's a good question. So there are, oh, sorry, first I need to repeat the question. The question was, can you uh, use it along with Ansible to fully provision a VM? Yes, there are different ways you can do that. Um, there's the dynamic inventory, there are Ansible Catli modules, and then there's Ansible integration in the plan file, which means that when you create the VM, you can just let Catli create the VM, and within the plan file, you can specify an Ansible or some Ansible playbooks that you want to run along with Catli. You like it? Thank you. <laughs>